Hey everyone, it's Harry from Slap the Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. I have an episode here that I've been trying to make for a while now and I call it the uh, Compassionate Cannabis Ribs. You heard me right, cannabis or ganja marijuana ribs. I uh, had a uh, one of my subscribers write me uh, kind of a very uh, moving letter. Uh, I, won't, I won't say his name, let's call him Joe. Joe has cancer and he's been undergoing some very brutal chemotherapy treatments and uh, he has been using a pot to help him alleviate the nausea and the pain and the discomfort. So he asked me, Harry, can you do an episode where you show us how we might be able to use some of the cannabis to make into edibles or into food and cook a barbecue rib using some cannabis infused uh, products. So I did some research and uh, I'm going to do this episode for you, Joe. Uh, I know how terrible cancer is because I have a personal experience. I lost my wife to cancer. Uh, she died of colon cancer and uh, it was a terrible, terrible disease and a very difficult part of my life. I'm doing this episode uh, for you, Joe, and I went to some great lengths to do some research and I have some cannabis products here and I'm going to do a compassionate cannabis ribs on this episode just for you and all the folks out there who are suffering from this terrible disease, who want a little bit of levity and get away from that nausea and pain and discomfort by maybe adding some of the cannabis compassion ribs to your repertoire for your treatment protocols. I'll show you guys how to take a regular spare rib, how to select it and how to trim it into a St. Louis cut. And uh, we're going to use some of my award-winning uh, rubs here to season the ribs. Also going to show you guys how we decarboxylate the uh, cannabis product here using cannabis. I uh, will talk you through the process that I was able to find on the internet. And we're going to use this uh, butter product here, which has in been infused with the chemical onto the cooking part of it. And then we're going to see how the results will measure up at the end. The recipe calls for this three and a half grams and uh, with uh, one stick of butter. And uh, that's the formula. We're going to smoke the cannabis to release the chemicals. And uh, we'll uh, start uh, our rib process after that. The first thing we need to do is to heat the uh, cannabis. And uh, this is about three and a half grams, about uh, $35 worth. And uh, this is readily available in California because uh, weed is legal here. So we're gonna kind of open it up a little bit. I'm gonna smoke this in a pit. 245 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. That is a uh, decarboxylation. It will release some of the chemicals and uh, we're gonna infuse it in uh, butter after that. So we can use the butter that has the active chemical in cooking the ribs. Our pit is up to temp and we're ready to put it in for about 30 minutes or so. Stirring it uh, every couple of times here. I have an Instapot set on low, about 165 degrees. We're gonna put uh, one stick of butter in there to mix with uh, three and a half grams of the uh, cannabis that we decarboxylated. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. I can smell it. Stir it up a little bit. In about 40 minutes and uh, this is ready. We're gonna remove it. Our butter is melted and uh, this is uh, one stick to go with uh, cannabis here. And uh, we have a, a grinder here and I'm gonna have a helper to grind the cannabis. Okay, we goes in here the butter is mixed batch the weed is wet so this bowl is dried out now but there it is all right let's put it back into the uh, 
warm water bath about 160 degrees let it sit for about uh, three or four hours steep for about a couple hours and uh, let's now strain it with a cheesecloth Spare ribs here from Prairie Fresh, and uh, these are known as uh, full spare ribs. It contains the uh, front portion of the uh, pig. It's also got a rib tip attached. I'm going to show you guys how we fabricate this into a St. Louis cut, which makes it a lot easier to cook. You can also cook a whole spare rib if you like, but I typically like to cut it into a St. Louis cut so that uh, it cooks a little bit more even, and I'll save the... Uh, rib tips which is the portion on the top of the rib to cook something else with it. First of all, when you buy a rib, uh, here's a couple of good things you want to try to find. So this is a really good rib because of the amount of marbling you can see here. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, flecks of fat here, striations and the marbling kind of spread throughout the meat. So this one is a really, really good piece of meat to cook barbecue with. This is a full spare. So it comes with a brisket bone here. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys the six things we need to do to a spare rib to convert it into a uh, St. Louis cut. The spare rib is the front part of the uh, pig and then the back part is the loin back or the baby back is gonna be this portion here that's connected to this, where the spine is. So on this one here, this is the right side rib cage of a hog. First thing you want to do is you can trim off the uh, diaphragm here, take the diaphragm off. And uh, this one makes a good uh, soup stock or you can kind of grill it and chop into small pieces, makes good street tacos. There is a brisket bone here. I like to cut away the brisket bone. And you should ideally use a chef knife to do that, but I'm just going to use my boning knife. This uh, boning knife is from the folks at Del Strong. They sent me a quantum boning knife, super sharp and really really a nice feel so I'm just cutting through the knuckle bone here and uh, cutting out the sternum right here this also is good for soup stock and you can also grill this and eat this the next one is I'm gonna go locate bone number four one two three four bone number four is the longest bone in there stick my knife through it that tells me where to cut I'm gonna make a parallel cut to this edge on this side here cut it all the way to the back to cut away the rib tip Right here is number three. Number four is you want to remove this piece here. A lot of times there's a lot of fatty stuff here. This is called the insertion point to the pectoralis. Also called the false lean. And uh, I just call it the alien flat because uh, it, it should not be here. So you take a sharp knife, you just kind of run underneath like so. And just remove this little flap here. Like so alternatively, you can Cut off the first bone, which is what I also do sometimes. And this doesn't go, doesn't go to waste, it's good for soup stock. And you can just grill a single bone snack for yourself. And I usually like to count about 10 or 12 bones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe 12. This looks a pretty good slab here. I'm going to go 12 bones and that's the trimmed rib. Next thing we want to do is pull the membrane. You can take a piece of na napkin, find a piece of bone here, pick up a, a little bit of a flap here. You can also uh, use a blunt butter knife and kind of work your way in like that. Open up the flap, use a tissue napkin, run your finger into the membrane. There's two membranes, so make sure you just pull the top one. Let me just quickly recap the six things that we did to convert a spare rib into a St. Louis cut. So we took off the diaphragm, which is on the back side here, took the diaphragm off. We took the uh, brisket bone, which is connected here, off. Then we severed, the third thing we did was took away the rib tip, which is this portion here. Then we removed the false lean or the uh, uh, Insertion point to the pectoralis right here. We took this piece off so that we can cook it separately. And then the last thing we did, number six, was we removed the membrane. So that's a recap of the six things you need to do to convert a spare rib into a St. Louis cut. I just showed you how we made uh, this uh, cannabis-infused butter. 
which is a kind of clarified butter. Uh, as I paint it on, we're gonna get the first layer with the cannabis uh, butter. And then we're gonna use a combination of my chicken rub and my all-purpose rub. Chicken on the meat side and the all-purpose on the bone side. Many teams have been using this combination to win first place drips all over America. And uh, this is a really good combination. If you don't wanna use my rub, that's okay. You can use salt, pepper, garlic powder, or you can buy any other rub that you want out there. There's plenty of good rubs out there. Uh, we're gonna paint on the first layer here. So, so um, for those of you who are not aware, the, the cannabis or the hemp plant, it produces a, a chemical called THCA. So I'm gonna try to say it without stumbling. It's tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, which is called THCA. And you know, the plant produces this actually to fend, fend off the predators. And uh, it's kinda of like a parasites and pests won't attack the plant. Uh, this is not the component that you want to create the effect of the cannabis. Uh, so when you buy raw cannabis and use it in food, you have to convert the non-psychoactive non THCA into something called uh, THC. THC stands for tetrahydrocarbinol. And uh, this was actually discovered by an Israeli chemist uh, named Raphael Mechelum in 1964. And uh, I showed you guys earlier how to convert the raw cannabis THCA into the uh, psychoactive drug called THC, uh, which is what we are going to be using to season our ribs. I'm going to paint it on the uh, rib tip here as well as the spare rib. I'm going to use uh, just a little bit because I'm going to save a little bit for later when we continue the process to cook the rib. And I mentioned to you the decarb decarboxylation is when you apply heat and we did it about 245 degrees. We smoked the marijuana uh, buds in the Weber smoke fire for 245 degrees to release the chemical. And then uh, we actually steeped it in a water bath to kind of get the chemical to infuse into the butter. I, I have no idea how much concentration this is because this is not, I'm not a doctor, uh, you know, so I'm just telling you kind of what I learned. So this is kind of a grand experiment also for me. And I know that uh, this is used medicinally for people who have cancer because uh, when you go undergo chemotherapy, it, it's a brutal, brutal treatment. Now, if you don't heat this in the pit, to decarb it or decarboxylate it, right? Uh, the raw cannabis is not effective. So the psychoactive properties uh, will not be in the food. So you have to do this decarb process. So if you're gonna try this at home, uh, you know, I, I show you kind of how to do it. Uh, I This is my very first time doing it. So I'm also learning as we go. Okay, I've got my uh, kind of schmear on it using uh, some of the uh, THC infused butter. Now I'm ready to apply the product here. On the back side, I'm gonna put the all-purpose. So, nice even coat. Pat it down. Get a little bit of chicken rub on this side. Nice even coat of ch chicken rub. And we need to let it sit to let the uh, salt in the uh, seasoning settle in. And I'm gonna let it sit for 90 minutes before I cook it. We're gonna put our uh, cannabis compassionate ribs in a smoke fire. We're gonna run it around 275. Just gonna share some space here with some ribs I already have in there. In about an hour and 45 minutes. Absolutely beautiful, resting nicely. It's taken about two hours and 10 minutes on the smoke fire at 275 to reach this beautiful level of crust. The crust has set, 
we can touch it. So we're going ready to go to the next phase, which is to wrap in foil. Here is the uh, some of that uh, TSC liquid that we're going to dab on. Get some of that psychoactive chemical on the meat. So we hit it once before we put the rub on, and we hit it again just once we get done. I'm using this product here. Brown sugar, a little bit of agave, just a teeny amount. A little, a little amount goes a long way. So my slappy daddy sauce, a little bit. A little bit of uh, mango nectar. One teaspoon just to wet everything. So we got a wonderful flavor of the cayenne, sauce, agave, the butter, the THC. Okay, we'll flip over and we're gonna repeat. Alright, we're gonna wrap it and cook it until it's nice and tender. At this point, you can put it back in a pit or you can put it in the oven, doesn't really matter. If you wanna waste fuel, go ahead. I just put it in the oven because uh, BTU is BTU is BTU. The ribs are now wrapped in foil, so it's not gonna know and nor care whether it sits in the oven or it sits in a pit, but you can put it anywhere you want. I'm just gonna put this in my oven. All right, these compassionate ribs look absolutely beautiful. And you can see from the smoke ring here, super deep. Look at that, glistening and delicious. And uh, let's go take a bite and see how it tastes. Wow, it tastes really good. Uh, very, very tender, beautiful smoke ring, crazy good bite. And um, as to the uh, psychoactive properties, um, you know, only time will tell. I'm, uh, I'm going to go feed this to some folks who are a little bit more experienced with uh, these chemicals than I do. And uh, I can tell you from uh, my, my taste of the ribs, it's absolutely first rate, beautiful tasting rib. And uh, meanwhile, uh, before we do that, I guess Mr. Beans, he's been waiting patiently. Let's uh, give Mr. Beans a small piece here. I'm not sure if dogs can uh, eat these kinds of uh, chemicals, but um, we'll just give him a tiny little piece here. Make sure that he'll be okay. I don't want him to have any issues. Here we go. Okay. All right. You like the compassionate ribs, beans? I did not give him too much because I'm not sure what the results will be. But uh, I hope you guys like this episode. Uh, I'm going to go get some experts to go do some taste testing. And then I'm going to feature some of the impressions in the uh, epilogue to this video. Stay tuned. I had a chance to let uh, some uh, experts taste these uh, cannabis ribs to see if uh, the psychoactive effect was evident. I can tell you personally, after ingesting one rib, I waited uh, an hour and uh, there was actually no effect. So uh, I'm not a uh, marijuana user, but I just thought I'd you know, let you share my very anecdotal experience. So I had some experts who are familiar with the effects of uh, pot and they ate the ribs and I have to tell you the result. The overall impression I got from uh, three people who tasted it was that my ribs were fantastic and delicious from a barbecue standpoint. But from a psychoactive perspective, uh, it was actually a fail. So success as a competition of great tasting rib total failure as a cannabis strip. So I guess uh, using uh, what $35 or three and a half grams or three grams of uh, cannabis uh, into the butter, uh, the process did not work. So Joe, I, I'm so sorry to report to you that uh, I tried my best to follow some uh, processes to make cannabis strips, but unfortunately uh, it didn't work. So my uh, cannabis friends tell me that the better thing that you should have done or I should have done is actually uh, not try to make the cannabis butter with a carboxylation, but actually to go smoke the cannabis for the better, more effective therapeutic uh, effect, 
against nausea and uh, discomfort uh, during chemotherapy or cancer. So that's the conclusion, Joe. So sorry to report the results. Not, not everything I do is always a pass. So today's a fail, but uh, it's really great eating ribs and uh, everybody had a good time tasting it. I hope you will try these ribs, Joe, and I wish you all the best and I wish you strength and I'm sending you positive energy in your journey against this terrible disease. And I want to do a shout out to all of the people in the world who are experiencing uh, this deadly disease. Let's all find a cure for it somehow. If you can, you know, try to donate uh, to your favorite charity. I donate to the uh, different cancer charities, including the American Cancer Society, because of my history with my late wife. I would ask that you try to do the same. Let's see if we can all stand up against cancer, find a cure against this terrible disease.